Well, hi there students, it's Mr. Brissette. This video is to be a brief tutorial on how to scan in your line art that you've drawn traditionally on paper, whether with pencil or with ink, and how to get it ready for digital effects and editing. So let's get started. When you go into Adobe Photoshop, you first need to create a canvas. That canvas is going to be the foundation for everything that you create. So you go to File, New. One of the challenges that I see here is that we are at 72 res. Always be at 300 resolution in this class. Next, we're set to pixels. I'm going to go to inches. So mine is a landscape layout. So it is very, very wide. So that's the 17 inches. And it's also not as high as it is wide. So that would be the 14 inches. And that's all that we have to do. I'd say this right here is the most important part. If it's too low, your resolution's low, not enough pixels per inch, your picture is going to be pretty small and pixelated. And so we'll go OK. The tools that we're going to use to touch up our line art are going to be our eraser tool, maybe our brush tool, our layer panel, and then up here under image, we're going to be using what are called adjustments. Now I've scanned it in, it's very big, and it's larger than the surface area of the scanner. So I had to scan it into pieces. We so just move the uh, window down a little, grab the file that is your line art, and just drop it right into your canvas. Now here's the new layer that was created for that. I'm going to rotate it by using a free transform. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command T. And rotate it over, place it over here. We'll resolve size and scaling a little bit later. We need the rest of the figure. So I'm going to drag and drop that new piece in here and just place him, hit enter. No need to rotate. Turns out there was a slight error when I scanned it in. I had it as 200 resolution when it was scanned, and I have a 300 resolution canvas. So you see what that resulted in is a smaller image than the canvas size itself. I'm going to stitch it together first and then scale it to match the canvas last. So some flaws that we see is first we have to get it perfectly aligned. And the good news is, is that with the layout that I had, all the individual elements, nothing's really touching each other. If in this image there were multiple things like crisscrossing, like comic book frames and such, you'd have to really get tight to make sure those lines line up. But for this one, it's going to be pretty easy. All I have to do is erase this cheek, uh, just make sure the character's all that we have, and then drop them in on top. Notice each one of these layers has this tiny little folded paper object here. That's called a smart object. It won't let you cut or erase, and so we first need to rasterize these. To rasterize, Simply right or control click onto the layer that you want rasterized and go rasterize. Now the icon is gone. We can cut and paste and do all that good stuff to it. I'm going to do it to the other file that I drug in as well. Now let's arrange and place. So I want the heads to be right about here and I want the body to be right about here. So I'm, I'm looking down in this area where the feet are and I'm placing it about the same spot. Not going to worry about lining up different parts here. I'm just going to select my eraser tool. That's E for eraser. And then erase that out. All these leftover junk lines with the eraser tool, we can just get rid of those. You can shrink the eraser down using the bracket keys. You can hold down the shift button and click and drag to erase straight lines just like this. Get rid of this blob, this little blob. And I think right now that's about the same layout that I had with my original. So I'm going to glue these layers together and make them one. To do that, you shift click. You could then right click and go merge layers. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command E. Now it's one layer. I'm going to zoom out. Let's scale it up so that it matches the canvas a little bit better. I'm going to go to Edit, Free Transform, or Command T. Let's grab the corner of the bounding box. And if you've got an older version of Photoshop, make sure you hold down Shift. That keeps the proportions stable as you do this. If you have a very new version of Photoshop CC, they made it so that it automatically defaults to keeping the proportions the same size. So I'm going to upscale a little bit, give some good breathing room between the top and the outside. And here's another fun thing that you can do in Photoshop. We can use what's called a selection. So a selection, we could use this 
marquee tool, this little square rectangular marquee, or the lasso tool. And if I want the figure to be over a little bit, I'll draw around him using this selection tool. You don't have to be perfect. And it makes these little animated marching ants. I'm then going to go edit, free transform, a little box goes around it, and I'm going to move him over a little bit. Maybe make him a little larger. And then enter when you're done. Marching ants are still there. We can deselect by just taking a selection tool and clicking off of the canvas. And notice this is all happening on one layer. See if I move the layer around, everything's still in its position. And if I want to position these heads, like space them out a little bit, I could do the exact same thing. But uh, let's skip that step, and we're going to go into touching up the line art. So you're going to notice the line art is kind of dim. On your computers it might look black, but on mine there's variation. So if we zoom in, there's like black and then dark gray and some light grays in here. We need to mess with the contrast. Also, where I use the Sharpie, we see all the stroke seams in here. So to enhance the line art and improve the contrast, I'm going to do what's called an adjustment. Go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Now this tool right here shows the amount of black, gray, and white pixels. I'm going to take the gray and I'm going to pull it over and it's going to darken all the line art. Now you can do it too much and it really bulks up the line art and shows every little flaw, but let's levels adjust down here where this black area is. Command L is the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to grab the black arrow and as we pull it, notice how it becomes solid black. Also, a bunch of little flaws and dots start to show up in the white space. That helps give me areas to correct. And I'm going to only go far enough to the point where those strokes disappear and then say, OK. Let's zoom into one of these faces and check our line work. And sure enough, it's a lot more solid black. I also have a lot more to clean up now. So using my eraser tool, I'm going to use a hard-edged eraser. That's E for eraser. And just erase any of the flaws that I see. You may or may not see these on your computer. That's OK. If you have leftover pencil lines that just wouldn't erase, you know this is the way that you would get rid of those. If you have little guidelines that helped you lay out your product, you know, erase those. And I'm going to move each of these heads so they're, they're a little bit more spaced apart. So again, lasso it free transform and deselect. Lasso, free transform, enter and deselect. Lasso, and if you accidentally grab an area that you don't want, you can hold down Option or Alt to take away from that using your lasso tool. Free transform, and adjust. And it's that simple. So that gets this ready for coloring or any digital effects that we want, uh, any presentation elements, and maybe we'll make a video in the future on how to do some of those. Hope you found this helpful. I look forward to seeing you in class. Take care.